Hey guys! I'm sorry it's been a long while. I did not mean to disappear on you guys like that. I meant to take a short break only because I have been preparing for a couple things on my SCA calendar, which were very long extended events, and then just promptly forgot about filming everything and then continued preparing for different events. An update on my kit situation. I have a bunch of wonderful Norse stuff. Not so much anything more on the German kit that I've been building. It's been stuck on the hose thing because I have to draft the hose pattern and just looking at that is like... It, it's witchcraft. It, it does my head in. I, I don't know how to drape, especially on yourself. So I'll be definitely like asking someone else for help on that. But the German kit is on hold for now. I've also recently added another persona under my belt. The German stuff doesn't belong to a persona, I just felt like making something really late period and pretty. I am putting together a Japanese persona, as I have recently joined the local Japanese house in my SCA kingdom. The Japanese persona is... Since I'm a fighter, it will be the fight kit's a Shigeru based, which is the samurai foot soldier. And then for soft kit and out of uh, armor, I am a male Oiron, which is a <laughs> very noble uh, courtesan of sorts. Um, I'm already part of the courtesans guild in uh, SCA, so yeah, it's fun. And the German thing is for courtier, courtier uh, kind of suit too. So uh, a lot of pretty fancy garb, and I am digging it. And part of this next project here today is part of my Oiron kit. High-class Japanese people loved layering all of their... Not all of their... But layering up their clothing so that you had multiple colors showcasing as well. Um, so I will be making another kasode, which is, which is kind of more of a short shirt-like garment. Um, this one will have curved sleeves as well as long sleeves because fancy again This is not going to be a tutorial on how to do that because I'm still iffy on the subject myself um, And just I'm going to be copying the one that I have already But yeah, so let's get started To start out the fabric I'm using today is a lovely poly satin Drafting the body pieces for the kasode is quite interesting. At first it seems quite complicated when you look at it real quick, as a kasode is made up of a couple of different parts. The parts the kasode is made up of are the migoro, or the body, the ukumi, which is the front panel, eri, or the collar, and the sode, which are the sleeves. To draft this, it is kind of like your mid of the neck to your bicep. This is more for uh, Muromachi era stuff. Um, the width of the body pieces and sleeve pieces always kind of change, but the Okumi and the Eri are all roughly the same throughout. Also with the collar uh, width changes. Working and drafting on this fabric was very much a pain because as, as uh, I've come to learn that you never ever work with poly satin and I'm running my first experience with that now as I've tried to draft the first sleeve and while it was just off on both side measurements somehow the lines always warped and uh, the sleeves were the easiest to cut out because I had the nice straight lines to base off of like so. Another thing that made this project really tough was the sewing thread I used. I chose machine cotton, which would love to do all of this bunching up as I pulled it through, and all the knotting. It was such a great, easy time to work with it. But this is the only real time I used a guideline while I was sewing up any of this. Um, I typically use my thumb as seam allowance when sewing, but for the sleeves, you have to sew them in a way that makes them curved, and this line helps out the curve process.
Now I will say that the curved sleeve I have here is quite modern, but I will round it out when it's out of the time out zone. Is this project. Ugh. Here I'm preparing to sew the two body pieces together. Doing so you kind of place um, the right sides to right sides, right? And sew to the middle. And the middle line is where you create your neck hole or slit for this garment. Then sewn up middle part it becomes the back and then the two front pieces that are free become the front pieces that drape uh, around your body. After f figuring out where the middle is, I mark out the three inch line that becomes the neck hole, or neck slit, and mark that out and snip it. After sewing up and finishing the back seam, I am placing the okumi. These ones were quite short for what they should have been, but it was- it's okay. It's okay. But here, it's just especially lining up the fabrics, that way it all sits well together, and extra pinning just to keep everything on. After sewing the okumi on, I finished those seams as well as the outward hem, I guess, of the okumi, as not all of it will be encapsulated by the collar. And before doing that, I pre-measured out where the collar should sit at the ends, and it should sit one third of the way up from the body of the garment.
Once I finish the pre-hemming, I take out my little uh, measuring tape here and mark out the marking points for the collar to attach, which is the center line uh, one centimeter above the slit and at the end of the slit, as well as a centimeter down from where the akumi starts on the stitching edge. This isn't how I would normally prepare the collar, but to give it to somebody, I decided to iron it in half and then fold the edges in, so quarters, as you can see here. I would normally also starch this, but I haven't really gotten to the starching process yet, but this, in the meantime, will give it more body than it would normally have because this fabric's so light, I swear it's made and spun from the breath of the devil himself. So, I think this is my second worst project on like a, like, kind of like techniques wise. Like this is, not only is this fabric really fucking hell to deal with, it's like slippery and, and like, it's basically like trying to grab a hold of an eel, um, but also doing the collar. <laughs> with fabric like this. Um, I decided to do that off off camera just so that I didn't have to deal with trying to get all the camera angles and make sure the lighting's good while trying to like <sighs> hold still. <laughs> um, eventually I did figure out like a pinning method where it's I only pin every couple inches so that way I have some tension on it while not having to deal with it just slipping and sliding everywhere. Um, normally when I sew, I don't use any pins at all unless it's like specifically having to hold something in there, like putting on a collar. But for like normal stuff, I, I don't have to like... But for when I fold over things, um, like putting on a collar and you have like one side stitched and you have to fold it over and then do the next side or however you do it, but yeah. Um, I don't have to use pins for that because it's already held down by the original row of stitching on this side, right? The stitching on this is not like my favorite. I don't know how well you can see this Focus, okay, so what I had to do for on the other side here If you can see it is not only is it whipped down But this fabric is so light and loose that it just didn't like just whipping this down wasn't good enough so I had to go in again with just like a reg- can you focus? Like a regular row of um, running stitches and then it needs an iron but even the um, invisible ladder stitch for that I would do for in here that barely cuts it. It's so puffy but that that's, comes with ironing. But yeah this is like Demon, this is demon fabric, <laughs> and I guess the splotches are, were a warning. There, there, there was a warning. It totally doesn't look like blood. This isn't cursed. As I said previously, I'm now inserting the sleeves, and that was done very easily. I just made sure that the whole body piece was lined up, and then put the sleeve right side in to the 
wrong sides out. This sewing stuff terminology always confuses me, so apologies. After sewing both the sleeves in, it is now to line up the hem. Usually this wouldn't necessarily happen if, as everything would be able to stay in place, but this fabric is so loose that it just distorted, and so this was a bit of a frustrating thing to like see and witness, but it, it's a thing I can fix, and it's no big deal, just, you know, one of those things. And we're finally in the last legs of the race. I am sewing up the hem here. I did one of those mitered corners and I'm just whipping down the edge before moving on to the running stitches for the rest of it. I forgot to mention this previously, but when I was sewing in the sleeves, I switched over to silk sewing thread and that's why there's the change in the color. Um, I only have black or purple and purple is reserved for another project but the silk made this project go so much easier. And here it is all completed. It is quite comfortable to wear. I, I love the sleeves because I chose to leave them open, I guess. So it's got this nice drape and the contrast between the two different stripes on them lends in like a nice little difference. So yeah. Also, I couldn't find evidence of this happening here, but it's quite comfortable. No sources, but there's some people that say that samurai like to do this to free up their sword arm but it looks really cool. I'm gonna do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 